Welcome back to Creating Cooperative Kids. I'm your host, Bill Corbett. If you're an adult who cares for or lives with children, you know how crucial it is for you to get the kids to cooperate so you can maintain your sanity to start with. Without it, life can be quite a challenge and power struggles with strong-willed children can be devastating for the parent and the child. That's why I can't wait to introduce you to my next guest and to see what she's created. Kelly Robinson is a major in the U.S. Air Force Reserve and a mother of two young children. As a means to handle the power struggles with her daughter, she developed a visual schedule to help her daughter see what she needed her to do and cooperate with. From that first successful prototype, she created schedules that are being used in homes and classrooms around the country. Welcome to the show, Kelly. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. When I first heard about your product, it, it automatically brought me back to when my kids were little. I had taken cutouts of the major things I needed them to do <laughs> because mm -hmm. I they they would not get they would not go brush their teeth they would not and they're running and scurrying all over the place mm -hmm. and it was probably motivating them to make dad squeal and run after them but i finally posted these big <coughs> giant pictures on the top of the wall where they can't touch them mm -hmm. and um, now when i have to tell you i was in the military so i put a p piece of tape on the floor and i had them all report to the line and and while people make fun of me with that children love that because they love preciseness when you give them clear visual instructions they're more likely to comply so they would all get their toes on the line and start going through the items and brush your teeth go to the potty brush your, you know exactly. get their story and everything right. but you actually took that idea and created something different and how did that start well everything you're saying is you know mirror images my experience with my daughter when she was two and a half years old she was very um, strong willed and every morning we would get up and it was a bit of it was more effort than it should have been to get just through that morning routine um, to convince her to do the proper things prior to playing so I started to say to myself I've got to find a way for the two of us to get on the same page because we're not and it was a struggle and it was creating a lot of stress for the both of us which you know you want to have a happy relationship when you're home with your young one and we weren't so I came up with the idea of pictures I thought well maybe if I put a picture on the wall sh it'll click for her what I'm asking her to do so I strung along the pictures in that same way and I just started out with the morning routine and I said okay Rachel we're gonna wake up and we're gonna look at this board and it's gonna tell you as we go down and she kinda gives me the nod you know so I said okay and I'm wondering is this gonna work I have no idea and I moved I had a little marker on it and I moved it to the next thing I said oh first thing of the day is let's go to the potty and she goes okay and runs down there and comes back and I said you wanna move the marker down yeah and she moves the marker down I said what's next she goes brush my teeth and off she goes and I was like are you serious <laughs> 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 and this thing just communicated for me you know it, it's like if, the, if it said it she followed it if I had said it there was that power struggle between the two of us it became the nice uh, third party <laughs> in the room that settled that squabble between us well that's interesting because we, it, it, our kids behave differently when we're com kind of communicating with them and they kind of become defiant as this natural thing because they're trying to really shed their their image of being a baby and they want to grow so mm -hmm. they're very defiant with parents mm -hmm. but you're right if we can blame it on something else <laughs> and it's not the right. parent they're more likely to comply right. so early in my uh, psychological studying what I discovered is kids live only in the moment so they don't know what's coming next so if your child's playing with a new puppy or a game or a video game and you tell them okay we got to get your coat on go they're like what mm -hmm. you know they look at you like you have three heads because they don't get it and what parents normally do is they yell and you know come on or mm -hmm. they bribe to get them in the next thing mm -hmm. but when you actually d do what you've done and you transfer power to them to let them see these things right well and oftentimes too it's not just that you know the parents yell but the child has a tantrum at that moment because they're enjoying what they're doing so much they have no idea you're about to pluck them out of that moment and when you do they have a meltdown because they love what they're doing at that moment so what you know another thing I noticed which was huge with my daughter was she loved to watch TV you know she loved her car her cartoons and every time I turned off the TV there was a meltdown and I thought you know this is you know every day I've got to figure out a solution for this so when I put the schedule up and I said um, okay you see there's TV right there and, and I used one called an activity clock which is the one with the arrow and it's just a sequence so there's no time to it it wasn't super structured it was just laying out the sequence events for the morning it would show the TV and then it would show after it 
um, lunch or outdoor time. So immediately she had the cognitive clarity that something comes after TV. This is not going to last all day. And it became predictable. And that transition out of TV into something else became so easy with a visual schedule. And what's amazing about your, your, your schedules is that it, well, I noticed that you have a couple different kinds, and one where it looks like the clock hand, so they can see things in sequence. And then you've got things linear, so they're across, they can see mm -hmm. things in different order. But the best part is each square is represented by an activity, and uh, they can uh, see what comes next because it's hard f to transition them. It's hard to get them to know what ha what's happening three segments from now. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when I explain to parents to use with their children, explain that everything's a segment, mm -hmm. and there are the day is made up of a whole bunch of segments. Mm -hmm. When you introduce them to that, they're like, really? But then if, they ta if you take your invention and they actually illustrate it, it really gets them out of the moment and into knowing what should happen next. Right. And if they see them, I mean, children are very visual, they're very concrete. So if they can see this and touch it, and especially with the activity clock where they get to move the arrow, there's that sense of, of empowerment. I, they think they're involved in this and I'm going to... Um, you know, accomplish this. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to move the arrow. And I did that. And I can, um, the activity clock is really good for the younger kids because it's just that sequence. And parents can set it up for half a day, the whole day, maybe just a certain part of the day that they have trouble getting through with those transitions because some children are very difficult to transition. They're not the laid back type. Um, but as they get older, the linear ones come into play with routines. Um, my daughter now is eight. And she doesn't need an activity clock anymore, but she has a routine teacher where we have the morning segment, the after school segment, and the evening segment laid out. And I love it because I don't have to repeat myself every single <laughs> night that, come on, we know our bedtime routine. I just say to her, go look at your schedule. And she's like, oh, yep. And up she goes. There's one in her bathroom and it lays out, you know, brush your teeth, put on your pajamas, get your book, and bam, she does it. Well, I, I want to make sure that they put the website on the screen so you can get more information on, on schedules. But what I like about that is when parents talk too much, which your device keeps that from happening, mm -hmm. when, when parents talk too much, I think what it does is actually um, puts, it, it gives kids a new disorder, and the disorder is parent deafness because <laughs> they, they block you yes, out. Yes. And uh, that's a new disorder. I, I think it really should be in the DSM-4 uh, or 5 coming up uh, it, because we got to stop talking so much, and the, the visual schedule lays that out so that we can really get across what we need them to do. Mm -hmm. And additionally, for parents like me, I need a visual schedule. <laughs> um, there are days where if I didn't put one up, I, there'd be no structure to the day, I have to admit. And when you put that up in front of your child, it's like a promise to them. And especially when they're little and it's pictures. Because those pictures are there, they're concrete, they can see them. And they know that one, two, three, four, and four things, mommy's going to play outside with me. You know, So maybe I have to get a few things done first, but she sees that and that's a promise to her and she knows it's coming and it like, it reduces their anxiety too when you make them a promise it's right there right. and you're going to keep it right. if you put that schedule up so parents need to uh, check out uh, visual schedules it'll change um, your interaction with children get more cooperation thank you so much for coming out to the thank show you for today having me. and uh, letting us know what they're all about now that you understand life from your child's perspective i hope you will take the measures to help her see what's next before demanding <laughs> and getting frustrated but our kids aren't the only ones who generate some frustration. Adults do it as well to their kids. My next guest has some advice for parents about how the way they react to adult stress can cause frustration for their children. You'll learn more on the other side of this break, so don't change that channel. We'll be right back.